Hey guys, Mike here with everything about concrete.com. Now this video, like the thumbnail said, is can women pour concrete? And you know, my answer to that is definitely yes, as you'll see in this video. But it's also about pouring a concrete pa patio. So we're gonna pour a backyard patio here and you'll get to see just how we attack it, how we pour it, how we get it screeded and bolt loaded. But first off, you know, I got these two women that work for me and if you guys have seen any of my other videos you know that one's my daughter and one's her best friend the one in the maroon is Tia and the one in the blue is Abby and they're both in college but they both wanted to work for the summer and they're not afraid of work so I asked them if you know hey if you guys aren't afraid of work and you want to make some good money do you want to come work for me and they both said yes so they definitely can work they can definitely pour concrete and women can do this just just as good as men it's just a matter how you train them how you talk to them how you teach them just like anything else I mean it's just you, you gotta you gotta do it the right way so they'll want to do it and work hard and uh, you know not quit obviously so this is part of the process right here is just teaching them how to pour concrete now what we're doing is we, we can only get the concrete truck to both ends of this so I can get it to this end where the concrete truck is now I can drive it around the house the other way and get it backed up to this curved end you see right here in the front. So we started out, you know, here I am teaching them right here. This is how you do this. This is how you do that. You know, you talk to them like, like you'd want to be talked to. Um, but so we started out here pouring this thing in the middle. And we're going to, we decide to do that kind of like that square end first. And then we'll back the truck around the other side and do this more curved end. So it, it didn't really matter which side we started on, but we decided to do the, the one that's a little bit bigger first. So this is a two-part series, guys. This first part, I'm teaching you, or I'm showing you how to pour the patio. And then make sure you come back for the, the next video coming out in the series will be what we're going to do for a finish on this. And we got a pretty special finish going on this, so make sure you come back for that. If, if you haven't watched any of my videos before, you know, my videos are all about concrete and mainly concrete flat work. So if you like that kind of stuff, I mean, go ahead down there and hit subscribe. That way you won't miss the next video coming out. And if you like the video, you know, go ahead and give it a like too. We're pouring, what we're using for concrete is a 4,000 PSI concrete mix. And you can see we got wire mesh in there and I didn't have any of the slab, the chairs we put under the wire today. So I'm just, I'm pulling it up. I got my wire puller in my hand. And as we dump the concrete, we're pulling the wire up into the concrete the best we can. But it's also got fiberglass, fiber mesh reinforcement in the concrete also. So there's two types of reinforcement. And once you pull that wire up into the concrete and you step on it, does it go back down a little bit? Yeah, it does. But it doesn't go back all the way down on the bottom. I mean, there's aggregate, there's rocks in the concrete, so those help hold the wire up a little bit into the concrete. Now, it would have, it definitely would have been better if, if I'd have had those chairs to put under it and hold it up so they didn't drop it all. But this is the next best thing: pulling it up and using the fiber mesh. So as you can see, we're getting this this dumped out. It's a four, like I said, it's a 4,000 psi mix. It's got 3/8 stone and uh, fiber mesh in it we're pouring it about a between a five and a six inch slump i use water reducer in the concrete mix so we don't have to use a lot of water to mix the concrete up to get it to be about a six inch slump the water reducer is a chemical they add that doesn't take away from the integrity or the strength of the concrete when you're pouring it at a slump like this it just helps helps the concrete be a little bit more workable without decreasing the strength at all. And we use it in all our mixes. You just ask for it at the concrete plant when you when the guy batches the truck out, you know, and he'll put it in there for you. He may charge you a bucket to a yard extra for it, but it's worth it so you don't have to use a ton of water to get the concrete to the slump you want it at. So we got that half dumped out. We're gonna move the truck around to the other side what Luke's doing is he's starting to mag float the edges and we set that, we had a piece of what we call ISO strip. It's a piece of foam there in between the house and this new pad. And that'll let the pad move freely from the house so the concrete won't bond to that foundation. 
So he's mag, we set that right to grade. So he's mag floating that. I'm mag floating over there where the board is. I'm getting that mag to grade. This patio had about a two inch slope from the house away from the house. So it slopes, it tilts in one way away from the house so water will shed off the pad when it drips off the roof or when it rains. You can see Abby's kind of kind of just rake fine tuning the concrete there, getting it ready to screed, doing the same as Luke. T is over there magging that edge a little bit, smoothing the edge out. And then I'm back in the truck in, and we're going to get this thing screeded. So like I said, this is going to have a pretty cool finish to it. I'm not going to give away what the finish is going to be because I want you guys to come back and watch the next video. So I'm grabbing the, the, the straight edge, the screed, the rod, whatever you guys call that. What do you guys call that? And also, down in the comments, who else Who else out there that pours concrete that's watching this has women that work for them? Let's hear it. You know, and, and how many women do you have? Would you have one? Do you have two? And if you don't, if you don't have any women that work for you, why not? Do, do none apply? Do you, do you feel that they just can't do the job as well? Or, I mean, what's the reason you don't have women working for you? Just none are interested in working for you? Um, I don't know. I'd just like to hear your thoughts on it. These guys are both 19 year, year old, so they're teenagers and they're young women. Um, they're going to college. They're both, they're both really smart. They're both really athletic. I actually coached them in basketball, too. So they were, I coached them from third grade all the way to 12th grade through basketball, AAU basketball. Um, they played a ton of basketball. They, I took them to national championships. They were in umpteen state championships. They both won their, their junior and senior season in high school. They both won state championships at their high school level. So they've had a lot of success with athletics. And I think, in, you know, in part, that helps make them a little easier to train doing what they're doing here. I mean, if they're very coachable playing sports, then they're going to be teachable trying to learn this skill. And that's what I found more and more as the summer went on. They were very teachable. And they picked, they picked up the skills really quickly. So as you can see, me and Luca screeding that section off. We've got a 14-foot screed, and that's about a 16-foot wide patio. So we're just passing it back and forth a little bit as we kick screed. Now, we could have had a 16-foot screed. I, I used to years ago, but I don't anymore, and that would have made this a little bit easier. But it wasn't too bad. So now we're just telling them, hey, the concrete's a little high. You know, we need it. We don't want it quite that high. you got to pull a little bit of that out of there so we can continue to screed. If we stop, if we stop screeding and we're not done that whole bay yet, it's for a couple reasons. Number one is because you're not raking the concrete properly, either it's too low or it's too high, or we just ran out of concrete and we need to stop. So you got to be able to teach them and tell them the reasons, you know, why you stop or why you're doing what you're doing so they understand the process a little bit better and they'll pick it up a little bit faster. So we got that part screeded. You know, we'll bull float it and we'll start dumping out the concrete for that second part so we can get that truck back. We don't want that truck hanging out too long because we know the, the concrete dispatcher needs it back for other jobs. This was about 6.30 in the morning when we started. And that's usually when they're the busiest, you know, pouring flat work stuff like this for guys like me. So it's important that when you're doing something like this, you know, you take that into consideration and get it dumped out as fast as you can and get it back to that guy. That way, when you call the next time, He's going to be like, oh, these guys are pretty fast. You know, I'll get it right to them and not say, well, last time you took two hours to get that dumped out. So you're going to have to wait until second round. So I'm dumping it out of the chute. You can see T and Abby there are kind of kind of pulling it around, kind of we call that we call that uh, raking it. And Luke was kind of helping them a little bit. So they have someone to watch because he's really good at it. He's an animal. He can, he can pull concrete with the best of them. And uh, so he's a good one to watch. Now that what we they're fine-tuning it is what I call is They're trying to get that level of concrete as close as they can to the finish level by just raking it around like that. And you can see me. I grab the bull float. 
I'm getting them getting that part bull floated. We don't want we don't want to wait too long to bull float because then you'll start getting some bleed water coming up through the surface. And I really don't want to bull float the bleed water back into the surface if I don't have to. That just that just weakens the surface a little bit. So you want to get it bull floated right after you screed. And again, the bull float is just to push those the aggregate down a little bit from the surface and bring up some paste. So when you go to finish the concrete, you know, you're finishing the paste on the surface, you're not finishing the aggregate of the rocks. You can see there's four of us here today. We I have another guy here, but he he's gonna show up here shortly. He uh he just had a little personal thing to deal with this in the morning, so that happens. Happens to all of us sometimes. So he's got that he's gonna get that straightened out and then he's gonna show right up here as soon as he could get here. So that board right there under the deck, you see, we couldn't set that board to grade for whatever reason. So we left it sitting a little high. So we had to strike that edge with a straight edge to get the concrete to the right grade. And then we're just magging that smooth. And now Luke's going to use that, that wet pad. We got a, a smaller screed there, a 10 footer. He's using the wet pad we just magged to go by when he screeds instead of the top of the form. And I'm out there using the top of the form now on my side. So again, we're telling those guys, hey, it's a little high, you need to pull a little bit of that back, or you know what, it's a little bit low, you know, pull some more in. We only want we want just a little bit of high behind the screed when we're screeding. We don't want to we don't want to hole under it and we don't want to be pulling back two, three, four inches of concrete. So as we screed, you know, those guys are working and they're not stopping when we stop. they they continue to work. So we, we ran out. We need just a little bit more concrete there. As you can see, Darren just showed up. He's going to grab the bull float and finish bull floating that. But the answer to the question on the thumbnail was, you know, can women pour concrete? It's definitely yes. It's just, it doesn't matter if they're women or if they're men. You just got to, you got to teach them. You got to train them. You got to be patient. And they'll turn into some really good workers. If you motivate them, you know, motivate them. You give, pay them well. This job's hard work, so if you're gonna if you're gonna attract good workers, then you gotta pay them well, you gotta treat them well, and make them part of the team. Everybody wants to be part of a team, so this is Team Days Concrete pouring this. Um, you guys are part of Team Everything About Concrete. You know, I really appreciate you guys out there watching, subscribing, asking questions in the comments. That's really cool. So. Um, let's all just make this a big, a big, nice team that we can all learn from. Again, can women pour concrete? The answer is yes. So, okay, thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you on the next video.